created a channel that goes all the way around. What I hope to do is create some binding and kind of build the binding into the actual stock. But clearly I'm going to be using epoxy and then just flooding the channel that goes all the way around the blank. So the bottom of the channel goes all the way down, stops short about 1.5 millimeters. And we need a bottom. That way we don't epoxy the stock to the table. So I placed the epoxy and let it cure overnight. Took it off the table and ran it through the planer. So it's very smooth. So this now becomes the bottom. So I'm gonna lay this onto the CNC table like this. And then when we run the contour for the fretboard, the actual shape of it, it'll cut in to this channel and it'll expose that epoxy and I'll have a binding. So far, what I've learned is brighter colors pop out really well and the darker colors kind of get lost into the brown rosewood. So like purple, for example, is a little bit too dark, blue is too dark. Um, this red type of color stands out nicely, but it's really the, the greens and the golds that are really popping. All right, so I had to backtrack here a little bit. What I did was a facing operation to reveal the binding on the sides and the side dots. But what happened when I did that was the facing operation went so low that the very thin engraving lines disappeared. So the facing operation went too low and it essentially just exposed raw wood. So anyway, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna face and see if we can salvage this board. So I think I might just cut my losses and stop here. There are areas where it basically fails to show the engraving because the facing operation removed a lot of the epoxy. There are sections where the colors are kind of bleeding into each other instead of overlapping. There are sections where the fine lines are not connecting and where the thick lines are not connecting to the fine lines. There's a couple of examples there. That's just because I did the process wrong. So I think the concept is pretty sound, but the execution wasn't that great. So I think we're just gonna put fret slots in and then call it a day. So this test was a success in that I wanted to see if the end mill could cut fret slots and epoxy. And it could easily, just as easily as wood. So that was kind of test number one. Test number two is the colors and the translucency. So the translucency is cool, but with the dark fretboard and putting it on a dark neck, you won't see it. 
you'll just see through it, which is just dark and light's going to bounce through it, hit the dark wood and you're not going to see anything. You won't really take advantage of that translucency. And the colors themselves, I'm using mica powder and I just don't like the way it looks. It's not opaque enough. There's like a texture to it that I don't really want. I'm looking more for like a smooth acrylic, but sometimes the texture works. Like in this case where it just looks really dreamy, you have to really look at it under magnification. And you can see the fret slots work pretty darn good in epoxy, but will they hold a fret? And that's kind of the next test, right? Let's fret this thing and let's see if it actually holds on to it. I really experimented with some alcohol inks too. So the bottom binding has alcohol ink and epoxy and it looks really cool in the light, but you put it on a dark neck and it just vanishes. So translucency is cool, but you can't really take advantage of it. And I'm glad I did these tests. I'm glad I played around with colors to see what worked and what didn't. And I know that this is a total fail. I mean, this board is not up to my standards. I tested different colors for the fret dots because I wanted to see what the different colors looked like and how they contrasted against different backgrounds. And I don't know, I just, I'm going to try to stay away from primary colors. I just don't like the way it looks. It's a little bit too far out for me. I do like the blue, that kind of turquoise aqua, and I like the gold. So I want to stick with those type of colors kind of stick with a neutral color palette. So what we're going to do is we're going to abandon this project. Uh, we're going to call it. We're going to say this was a good test, but it's not really worthy of being put on a guitar. And let's start the new fretboard. So what I've done here is use more neutral colors for the binding. Now it's really dull at this point, but once it's polished, it should look fairly good. And it has really nice contrast with the rosewood. So I just try to stay away from the primary colors. And I also did a radius first instead of doing the actual inlays and then putting in a radius afterwards, I'm trying this process where the radius is already on the board. So it's a curved surface. And now I'm going to come in here with the engraving bit and just do the thin lines. So I think I'm onto something. This is the way to do it. This is the correct process. I did the radius first. And then I did the engraving, and this came out just the perfect depth. I picked up some fret wire from Stumac. I have the membership, so I get free shipping, and it's just really quick and easy. Nothing fancy, it's just Stumac Jumbo fret wire. The, the biggest wire they have, the tallest and widest wire that they sell. It's my fret wire radiusing jig. I got it off a guy who sells them in England. They're really good. Just gotta figure out how tight I want this. And so I have my 14 radius for the nuts. Don't quite remember what my compound radius is, but it's something like 17 or 16. So this one is set up to 16 or 17, which is close enough. And I have my Stumac Arbor Press here. And I do have a review on this, so I'll post a link to the video I did on the review. Now we're just going to cut these to length and then press them in. So whenever you cut frets, the ends get gnarly and the tang gets a little bit bent out of shape. It's hard to use your fret tang nippers when that tang is all skewed and warped. So I have these special nippers that give a clean cut to the fret and the fret retains its T-shape. So here you can see the tang is all bent out of shape from cutting it. This tool delivers a clean cut and I retain that T-shaped so the tang is perfectly straight. Then I put it in the fret tang nipper and I get just way better results this way. I've shown this method several times. Uh, won't linger too long here, but I use a syringe filled with Type Bond 1. Type Bond 1 is water soluble, so you can actually 
add water to it to make it flow a little bit better and flow into the fret slots. And then I press them with my Stumac fret press, which is totally out of the picture, but you get the idea. Just presses them in and then you clean off the squeeze out. Okay, so fretting is done. I press the frets in, glued them in, and then I use surgical tubing to glue the fretboard onto the neck. Surgical tubing is probably the best method to clamp a fretboard onto a neck. Um, you can use, you know, traditional clamps, it's great, it's fine, but it's not as efficient and as quick as surgical tubing. It actually works really well as a clamping system and it's very versatile in that you can get into all these nooks and crannies and you can go lengthwise and horizontal and vertical. You get a perfect amount of squeeze out with the surgical tubing. So I used this and then taking it off too. You don't have to worry like with clamps, you gotta like take the clamps off and put them away. With surgical tubing, you just unwrap it and then put it in the bag and you're done. So I think as far as optimization is concerned with your processes, you can't go wrong with surgical tubing if you're putting a fretboard on a neck. Heard it here first. Also, this is a yoga mat. Heard it here first. All right, so this is looking fantastic. So obviously this is a, kind of a raw fretboard. There's no oil on it. It needs to be clean, it's filthy and the frets have not been leveled or dressed. I don't know if I'm gonna do that on camera. I think you guys have seen this about a billion times. I think I'll show the end result, which is like a perfectly oiled board. That's it. This is looking really good. But this is the update. Thank you for watching. I know that the first fretboard I did was a total fail, but it really did help me understand what works with epoxy in, in a fretboard and what doesn't work. This is all an experiment. Like this entire guitar is just one experiment after the other. I've never done stem tops. I've never done a neck theater like this. I've never done epoxy binding or epoxy inlays. It's all brand new and it's fun to kind of play around. In any case, thanks for watching. Take it easy.